Okay, well, welcome everybody. It's good to have you here. Um, I knew tonight would be a little bit smaller group than last night. And this is another one of my projects that I'm hoping to that we're kicking off in the district. Um, we would like to like uh, the ability to teach with their with the Chromebooks uh, by using um, a device like this, Google Garden. So what you're going to learn tonight is how to set up scenes and how teachers are going to be able to uh, set things up so that they can push this out and everything. I don't want to steal all of Roy's thunder here, but um, this is a train the trainer model, okay, or, or meeting. The goal here is, is that you will then go back and be able to help facilitate this in your school. What does that look like in your school? I couldn't tell you exactly what it's going to look like because each school is going to be different. But the goal is, is that you will make sure that your teachers know about this tool and that they have a skill set um, to be using this tool. Does that sound good? Sound, sound easy enough? Okay, with that, this is Roy Button. He hails from California. Um, he wears camo, so I know he likes hunting and fishing. And he was not at all bashful about saying, hey, I can come to you for these days. Yeah. I know I can find something to do. Yeah. So, um, so this is Roy from Go Guardian, and he's going to tell us about how this works. Yeah, thank you, Robert. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Um, so, has anyone heard of Go Guardian? Maybe conference, anything at all? Land school? Land school. Okay. So this is similar to land school. I like to think it's a whole lot better than. Uh, so what Go Guardian does it is it enables teachers to, um, in essence, uh, control their students on their devices in the classroom. Uh, you can see what students are doing. You can see student reporting on where they've been the last six months while they've been in your class. You can see if they've been doing really well. What resources are they looking at that other students aren't? Try to provide as much information as we can so you guys can be most successful with technology in the classroom. Uh, so first off, uh, we will have this connected to ClassLink. So um, all of your classes will be pre-loaded. You won't have to create one. Let's say on a rainy day, you have a weird uh, class setup and you wanted to, it's really easy to create a classroom. You can put in Classroom name, subject, study hall, maybe, um, or makeup class. Um, let's do that right now. Uh, I can add it directly from Google Classroom. Are you guys using that? Some people, some people are, some people aren't. Um, uh, so you can pull in directly from Google Classroom if your class is rostered, or you can just add a class. Um, and this is can be done three ways. An enrollment link, uh, individual emails, or upload a CSV. Um, like I said, you don't need to worry about this if you already have the classes populated. So just another way to add a class if you're ever in a pinch. So we can actually go to one of our class sessions here. Um, and we can see First of all, uh, I'd like to have a brief sidebar. These are our robots in our office that browse the web just constantly. Sometimes they look at weird things. I apologize in advance. Um, so uh, we can see what our students are doing in class. We can see their screens. If we notice the little uh, thumbnails here, those are other open tabs that they have. So in the browser, you can see Hey, uh, maybe uh, Becca is actually doing, oh, she's, if we're in a specific class, uh, uh, home economics class, cooking class, already changed. Uh, if she's looking at YouTube, you knows what else does she have open down there? You can see she has the food, she has a blocked page. We can close out those tabs, say, back to work. So these screenshots are updated every uh, about three seconds, and you can see right there that it's already been updated on Becca's. Yeah. Does that give you the full link? So 
So she's looking at she's looking at that one right now, but like the other three tabs that are open, if when you go back to that screen you were on, does that say like Google.com slash movies slash gotcha? Yeah, so, so it has the um, uh, yeah, there's a band, inappropriate band name. Um, so if we uh, look at the um, what they're looking at, we can see the page, the doc name. We don't see the whole, um, the whole URL here. But we can see the sub URL that they might see, like the page name or something like that. Would say like, you know, whatever. Right. So, yeah. So this is actually the title of the document. The document yeah. Google. So it's not just Google Docs. It says that right. It gives you the base URL there. Okay. But uh, that would give you the page name right there. Okay. Uh, so we. Open or we can close tabs here. We can do it for individual students. We can open tabs as well. Um, as I went over this yesterday, so I'm going to repeat jokes, but this is about the easiest website. I know how to spell. Um, so we're pointing them to ESPN right now. Um, and every so often it's slowly updating. Should be ready. There it is. Oh, the Cardinals win. Exciting. Uh, so if we need sports updates, you can always do that really quickly and see that the Cardinals are up 10 nothing. Uh, from here, we can also lock the device. So Ron is maybe a repeat offender. Maybe he's looking at something he uh, shouldn't be looking at. We can lock it out from here. And I can quickly unlock it as well. Did you screenshot that or print that for like say you're inappropriate, we're gonna have a meeting on that. Yeah, let's say we're gonna tell mom and dad that Gabby has poor taste in music. We can take a screenshot. And those screenshots populate here. What I did there was I navigated to this section where I can see different views. This is the snapshot view, this is the command log all the different things I've done throughout the class. And how long does it store that? That stores for six months. Yeah. And this is a timeline view. We're going to see a different version of the timeline view uh, here in a moment. But this is the active timeline view. So you can see it's slowly crawling across. The <coughs> and if we look, uh, we can see um, <coughs> Apps. They're watching a lot of YouTube right now. I can start to get an idea of what students are looking at based on the uh, color or the thumb, thumbnail version of the little internet icon. I'm going to go back to the screen view. So we did that with an individual student. We opened tabs. Uh, you can do this with all the students as well. I could select a subgroup of these students and say, hey, the three of you are working on a specific project. I'm going to push you to these websites. Um, so rather than have your students take a while to get to a specific website, uh, you know, dilly dally, find where the backslash is, underscore all of those things, it's easy to just send out a tab to everybody. I'm on the same page, by the way. If I want to interrupt the class, say, make an announcement or lock the screen out and push out a give out quiz. I can lock the devices. And these are going, you're going to slowly see it here. And there we go. Browsing is now disabled for the students. We go ahead and unlock the screens and they will go back to browsing as normal. Yeah. Okay. I I apologize, I'm done with any more questions. No, no, no. Love it. When you lock a screen, say no student, it's not an inappropriate site to lock the screen. How long is that locked? I and mean, if they if they turn it off, does it allow them to turn the screen off? If they turn it off, will it come back to the lock screen? Um, so if they turn off the locks or if they turn off the computer, it's just gonna turn off the computer. And if they go back to the lock screen, they'll eventually be able to go back, sure. But uh, actually I can show you a way right now where we can block that inappropriate site forever. So we have these things called scenes. Scenes are controlled browsing environments for teachers. So 
Um, the district has a, a district level filter where they say we can go to these sites or we can't go to these sites. Um, this allows you to do just that, just in your class period. So if I go in and create a scene, and let's say I want to block YouTube. Save that scene. Now I'm going to apply that. We don't have, oh, there was one. Uh, we got, not Diane, she's already uh, moved her screen. But uh, Diane was looking at YouTube, it blocked it, she navigated away. We see some here that are already moving to restricted websites and uh, being blocked. So when I apply that scene, this little smiley face, will pop up. It says, student is in your active scene. We look at the bottom corner there. Tyler has navigated to YouTube. He's been blocked. Um, so when you see that, you know that your scene is working. So you can always have this going. You can just ensure that students aren't going to go to YouTube. Um, you would have to apply this for your class periods as they start or uh, schedule them automatically. It's very easy to set up. Uh, but let's say, for example, um, I wanted to change this scene. I wanted to do YouTube or history of music through YouTube. So now I'm going to toggle over to block mode. What block mode does is it blocks every website except for the ones that you allow. So now YouTube is allowed. I'm going to go in here and also allow Google Docs, add that, and Kahoot in case I give out a pop quiz in the middle of our classroom session. Save this. Prior to that, I'm going to also include an auto open tab. So we'll see what this does. <coughs> this basically ensures that as soon as uh, this scene is applied and the student has logged into their Chromebook, this tab automatically opens. I'm going to add YouTube that. And I'm also going to set a maximum number of open tabs. Update this scene, navigate back to my class, change the scene to review. We can see that students' screens are immediately changing to all of, they're going to YouTube. If they're navigating away from that, they're being directed to a block page. Um, it's just a great way to easily enforce where you want your students to go. You can update this throughout the school day. You can update this throughout the week, month, year. So you can actually tailor these scenes, these controlled browsing environments, to your lesson plan for that day, week, month, full semester. Yeah. So when our kids, to log into any site, they go through Classmate. Would that count as a site, or would we? Uh, unblock that in every instance? Great question. So if they are going through the class link uh, single sign-on, there's an easy way to add that. Because that's how they log into Chromebooks. Is yeah, that's how they get to everybody. Yeah, so it, it would, if, they would log, if they're logging into their Chromebook to do that, it's easy, but uh, to do any website stuff, if they're, because it's that single sign-on, correct? Right. Uh, so <laughs> what we can do here, Go into that. Oh, that's just going to um, and these. This is called wild carding. So we would just in, uh, include the name, two uh, asterisk stars on both sides, and that way students can access anything with class link in the URL. That's going to be able to help, especially with single sign-on some redirects there, um, or whatever route 
is in that single sign on, I think it is quantified. We said that at the mm -hmm. district level so that the teachers, we don't have to train the teachers. Great question. Um, yes, um, uh, that is in the district quick list. So what we can add here is something that if it's in block mode, uh, it'll say like think block mode, single sign on. And that can be done at the district level. It's really easy to share out to everybody. So does the concept of this controlled Bradley environment make sense? Sometimes it can be a little airy, but um, any questions about go there and then there? Um, so I've used a similar one uh, okay. when I'm in plan school. Yeah. And with that one, you had to load your class at the beginning and you had to release it at the end. Otherwise, you can get on to websites on other teachers, teachers' classrooms. How does this one work? Does it, does every teacher load it at the beginning of class or is it something that automatically filters depending on the day? Great question. So, what is the schedule like for the district? Does it vary based on campus? What is that? Yes. Kind of depends. I talked to one district in Texas today that they, every Monday, the math teacher has off. They go to art. It was really confusing. They said they've been losing kids in between classes. Uh, sounds great. Uh, <laughs> but uh, what, uh, what we have here, so if you notice this little smiley face, um, if Say my colleague were to go on right now, and if any of them are giving demos right now, they're probably freaking out. Uh, but um, if they were to go on any um, uh, start a, a session of their own, I would have a little warning right here, and it's just a little triangle with an exclamation point. And we actually run something above um, right here as well, and or it might be in the senior class, but we make it known that your students are being blocked by another teacher. And all that you have to do is if students are browsing freely, it's, you know, you don't have the need to do this right now or to force a scene, you just remove it like that. Or to do your own, you can just go to whichever uh, scene you're enforcing for that day and just click it and you Okay, so yeah. you can kind of overrule it another day. Yeah. On and and if you if you teach a class that um, has uh, if students are moving from class to class, it, I guess they forgot to take that poll. Elementary school here or no? Okay. Okay. So middle school and high school, um, you all have separate classes for each you know person that you see. You might just teach English, but you have English one, two, three, four, five. Um, so those. The scene is only connected to how long the classroom period is. That makes sense. So it only runs for that 45 minute, hour long session. Then it shuts down. Can you do a, like a generic, like a general search restriction, like block all sites except those that contain continental drift? Oh, so a type of a thing. Do I have to say, say block YouTube or block Yahoo? So you would want to do. So I mean, to get the students to try to do original research. Right, yeah. Um, I don't want them going anywhere. And you want them to, you want to be able to block Wikipedia or something. Right. Um, well, well, not even, yeah, not even necessarily just that. Just include, you know, allow only sites that say continental drift. Got it. So you would have to actually say it in the URL. Um, but you can also point your students to specific sites, you know, like if it's um, provide a list of tip sites. Like yeah, you can include those there, and those are <laughs> the ones that you go. And then it's got store scenes. If I say, okay, I know that for this unit I'm going to do this, but now I want to remove that particular scene, but I want to use it next year, and I don't want to have to restart. You don't want to have to restart it, right? So if you go here. Saves all of them. And you, if you need to delete whatever, because if you created too many of them, um, you can easily delete it. But that's the perfect uh, way of thinking about it creating for specific lesson plans, creating them for specific classes. That's what we really suggest. Is there a limit on how many? On how many scenes? 
No, we once saw a teacher with a bunch of them. It was a terrible idea. Um, I would suggest a personal limit. Uh, maybe, I don't know, because you can use them for whatever class you're teaching. Um, so maybe one per class if you're seeing different grades every or every different class period. Uh, if you if the content matter is changing a lot, you can really, especially like if I was a history teacher, I could use depending on my um, read my grade levels and the textbook resources. I can use the same things over and over. Yeah, if you didn't have a lot, I'd recommend setting like a naming convention. Yeah, it's easy for you to follow up. Yeah, the teacher was really couldn't figure out what was being what was blocking what. Two thousand times. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> one per word, and one block. Um, so if we go back into our classroom, so here we can. So let's go back to the classroom. I'm going to remove this. Probably complaining right now. Um, let's go into our classroom details. So we can see a few things here. Um, the session. That's just our active classroom session. Uh, we have 20 minutes remaining. We have this big list of previous sessions. <coughs> there we go. So what we can do is click on those, and that goes back quite a bit way in time. I think it also goes back six months. Um, that list of classes. <coughs> I can see everything that my students have looked at in my class for the entire day. Makes you dizzy. Sorry for the people at home. Um, but this shows, so we can see if, uh, what Ron was looking at when this was restricted. We can see uh, Facebook, Google Translate. Uh, we can see everything that they were looking at in their browser while they were in our class. That will also, that will also record the block sites they try to go to. So, yes, um, and those block sites are, uh, those would be recorded on the, uh, the filtering page um, or the uh, at the district filtering level because all we would see would be that URL. Uh, but let's say if um, you wanted to see any of those snapshots, like if I took a snapshot in this class, I didn't for this specific one, uh, but I would be able to see that. Our students, so as I mentioned, these are actually going to be populated by class link. You don't really ever have to touch uh, the students in this section here. You don't have to remove them. Uh, on, let's say, a student at the beginning of the semester uh, joins a class, um, schedule changes, and by Wednesdays in a different class, by Thursday it will be updated. So it's just an auto sync with class link. Really, it stays on the ball for that. Teacher. So the teacher section. Um, so this is my classroom. I can add teachers. So if I have a student teacher, um, if student teacher get emails, I guess, uh, really dependent on that. Um, but uh, if you co teach a class, and you want that teacher to have access, they can here. Um, and these roles, <coughs> classroom roles. So it's it, depending on, it's the owners, teachers, and helpers. And this is that chart that really dictates um, what the people can do or what they can't do. Um, so owners can do just about everything. Uh, teachers can add or remove students, start sessions, view active sessions. That would be like a go, good co-teacher. Uh, a helper might be a classroom aide. So if you add a teacher manually, the nightly sync. Oh, the nightly back. sync, that is a good question. They will be the winner. Oh, yes. So it's just yeah. a daily. Could be a daily thing. Yeah. Get a substitute. Like a long-term sub. It might be something like long-term sub. Is giving access and <coughs> write that down. Yeah. 
Can you make it out for pair of Long term subs. Right, so um, like site, uh, site resource teachers, those kind of folks. Then in settings. So we have some information here, the name of the class, subject, boring stuff, file color if you want to change it. Um, we have a default scene. So um, like where you mentioned, uh, having those scenes that are associated with each classroom. If you're teaching kind of a varied uh, schedule, you can have that here. And this starts as soon as the class session starts. And the scheduling. So if you ever have a um, schedule that's pretty consistent, uh, it's easy to schedule the classes automatically. Uh, if you know it's going to be a weird week, you would have to go in and uh, manually toggle them off. But if for a majority of the time, it's really easy to just schedule a session, open up GoGuardian, Students are already in class. Does, so is it always like set up the timer starts with this or like if the teacher logs in and opens the class, then it great, can start? Great question. The, the timer's already started. So if um, you don't even have to open up your laptop. If yeah. you have this set up. If you have it set up. If you don't have it set up with logging into the classroom, mm -hmm. start the timer? Yeah, uh, logging in starts yes. the timer. And the default time is 45 minutes. Then reporting. So reporting is um, a email overview of what you'll receive when, uh, or excuse me, is what you'll receive is an overview of what your students looked at throughout the class. So it's just a high level overview, top websites, there's a pie chart view, um, and then some other uh, information for you. It's really high level, but it's great to see it. Just you know, check in on all the Any questions? So, student recording uh, and then the screens. Uh, <laughs> So student reports, uh, we saw the um, long, the, the big scale timeline of this. And this is that student report once again for the whole time. It goes back, to, you can have it encompass 30 days, top website stock searches. It's great for checking in on students. They're doing well, they're not. Really easy to uh, pick up this granular report. Now you're showing the it shows the URL in the second column. Is that is that just the basic URL? But I mean, if I click on if I click on the, the wickedmetal.org, would that take me to the .org slash something that they were yeah. looking at specifically? Really terrified to actually take you to .org and see what will pop up in a filter. Hey, we have a filter. If it doesn't work. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Turns out we can't get there. But the hard thing is, is that there are there are sites that, that get through the filter, and you know this would produce that. Um, obviously, it's going to produce the block sites, um, and the kids are figuring out ways to get around the filter. And does that also have a like a time limit? I mean, let's say they let's say just. <clears throat> Somehow they accidentally got somewhere they shouldn't have. They yeah. even got out like after a few seconds. And it's okay, that was an accident. Versus right. somebody that got there and they stayed up for 30 minutes. So that's a great question. So what if it shows, like, I'm guessing, so the robots, they browse really quickly. Um, if we see that kind of movement, so like here, we have four minutes versus a minute. I think that's the um, lowest denomination we'll see. Okay. Yeah. So it'd be easy to kind of extrapolate from this like do the math right there. Oh they're 
They're taking a gander, nothing too serious, but then, oh, they got out of there quick. Yeah, you, if you would notice if it was a long stretch. And then this also has the uh, that list of the content, websites, docs, searches. So we've gone over this so far. What we're going to do next is a lot more fun. We're actually going to start our own classrooms. Um, and then I'll just need you guys to pair up and have one person be the teacher and then have the other person be the uh, student. And the students will need to be logging on on the Chromebooks. And we're just going to go through it. We're going to start a class. We're going to have some fun. Sound good? Cool. <clears throat> and any other questions before we get into that? Awesome. And they're all in, correct? Yeah. As teachers, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, everyone in the room. Yeah. There's, there's a couple of people. Yeah, I need one teacher. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Awesome. Sorry. So there are there are. Uh, yeah. If you came in a little late, you're going to be a student on that. Um, so if you go to if you navigate. Um, Someone is designated, I'm going to be the student, I'm going to be the teacher. Uh, we'll need one person to navigate to teacher.goguardian.com. That's okay. No. Hold on. Yeah. 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 Um, so it's just going to be, uh, and the uh, name and passwords, the name is going to be, uh, we'll have maybe this table be training one, this table be training two, training zero two, this will be training zero three and four. And this one will be training five. Training zero five. And then the password is guard 2019. That's what the teacher wants to do. Uh, that's what the student's going to log in as. So I'm just going to highlight one thing real quick here. Uh, that's our chat feature. And what this is, it's teacher-to-student chat. Um, it's not student-to-student chat. Um, if, you, if you just click this button, enable, disable that little button, pops up right here. And what I can do is interact with students. They're, for example, taking a quiz, taking a test, and you notice that one is behind because you can see their screen. You can say, hey, what's going on, Jeff? Um, if a let's if everyone's working on projects around the classroom, activity level is humming, and you just want to say make a quick announcement. Um, I can send an announcement to my students, and they actually have to X out of the announcement to then move forward to browsing it. So you can actually try that out now if uh, your student needs an announcement, but. Um, this has been, uh, we've actually had great feedback from uh, special education teachers. Um, you know, anyone who is dealing with a new student might, might, might not feel comfortable um, in the new environment yet. Um, and just, if a kid doesn't raise their hand, not everyone raises their hand. I was the loud, obnoxious kid in class, and um, not everyone is like that. Just another way to interact with students. Can can the student initiate that as well? Yes. Okay. So that's one thing that we're trying to work on too. If a student is initiating it, um, maybe have a, a function like a raise a hand. The one thing that we noticed was when we blocked the screen and then he tried to go to, or lock the screen, Try to go to another screen. It went to the other screen for like two or three seconds, and then it went pretty much. And then it blocks it. Yeah, little lag there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Eric's that no, teacher. We're just having fun. Uh, we're He's learning about uh, jumping spiders. He's just that teacher. Jumping spiders versus Kung Fu Dragon. Always so <laughs> <laughs> oh, a versus. Uh, and he will shock you. <laughs> we got caught as a student looking at that yesterday. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, do you think we're pretty much wrapping up here? All right. Thank you. This is going to be so awesome.